Hello, uh, welcome to the new show uh, for Drench 11. Uh, my name is Dan, and the show is going to be called Dancers in the Congo. Uh, we're going to talk about monsters, mysteries, and I'm going to talk with possibly one of campus's most sceptical men, a co-host. And my name is Max, yeah. and I am willing to be proven wrong on a lot of issues, but um, we're going to see how it goes. Uh, so where do you stand on like monsters in general? Like, I know you're a fan of like Bigfoots. I'm I'm not a fan of Bigfoots, ghosts, vampires, um, anything that just doesn't make sense. I mean, that is fair. Like, it's niche. It's it's very niche. But I'd say I'm. It's more something I I like to believe in. I need well, I need proof, and I'm sure you come with very good sources. I have the most reliable of sources, as we all know, Wikipedia. Brilliant, it's fantastic. Uh, and today's one is like the name's title said. Dinosaurs in the Congo. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher e- the name. Explain that for me. Well, are you aware of the, the, the Congo as a, as a place? As a place, yes. Fantastic. Never been, but I know about it. I've never been either. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to, but hey, might be nice. But anyway, according to uh, this, there is a living dinosaur in the Congo. How do you feel about that? My initial reaction is obviously... No. I mean, I believe dinosaurs are real. Well, that's, that's, um, that's a start. I think they went extinct at a certain point, and I think that was a long time ago. And I think we'd know if they existed. Well, I think you're, you're wrong. Uh, dinosaurs still do exist. They're birds. Uh, Jurassic Park child told us that. Uh, See, I, I would imagine you would have shocked quite a lot of people right now. I, I, I hope so. Uh, I ex- hope ex- explain what you mean by uh, birds are dinosaurs. Well, they, they, they just were. They're... They once a T Rex. It's now a sparrow. It, it took sixty five million years, but it, they got there. I mean, it's, that's intimidating. Imagine that in the breakout scene in Jurassic Park: a sparrow <laughs> just hopping through the electric fence to terrorise Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> It'd be a sight. But anyway, <laughs> this one, according to locals and early twentieth century explorers, is still alive, and it's it's not a bird. It's a, a so big one. You're talking about a full blown sort of. I'm talking about a brontosaurus kind of style here, or a patasaurus, depending on where you stand on the paleontological evidence. So, yeah. Uh, what, what kind of size is a, is a brontosaurus? Uh, I don't know the exact measurements, but pretty big. But this one seems to be a bit smaller. <laughs> the one they've, It's shrunk over the 65 million year difference. Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, so there's a brontosaurus in the Congo. Allegedly. And it, there's recordings. It's, it's a recording. It's more of a... Uh, it's mentioned in a book. First in Western text uh, in 1909 uh, in a book called it called Beasts and Men by Carl Hagenbeck. He was a German big game hunter, and basically he was in the Congo and he had two two independent sources tell him that there was a half elephant, half dragon thing living in the forest of Rhodesia, which is also not in the Congo. It's now Zimbabwe. So yeah. Yeah, how it got to the Congo. But. Probably, he was probably just bored of his coming out of stories like that. I mean, maybe. I mean, he he's, was also... He's running out of things to, to say, just kind of... <sighs> he was also a circus man, like Hugh Jackman. He was probably one of the greatest showmen <laughs> of the 20th century. Just like Hugh Jackman. Uh, I, I don't know about him, so I don't actually praise him that much. He could he could be an absolute monster. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's not... see Carl Hagen back alone. But anyway, him... He, saw, he got two reports of this, and then followed that by a naturalist named Joseph Menges, who also told him he had also similar stories from uh, natives in the area, telling him that there was this seemingly brontosaurus-like creature living in the forest. So, yeah. I've immediate thoughts. He's got a couple of sources. I'll tell you what. I'll let that sink in. Let's play a bit of music, yep. and I'll uh, get back to you on that. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> Right there, Max, throw, throughout Bowie, uh, have you thought about uh, the dinosaurs so far? Well, you think, okay, there's possible sightings of this one dinosaur in the Congo. Mm-hmm. Why just one? It, Where's who sa- his mate? Who says it's, they're all seeing the same one? It could be multiple. No one's going, oh, yeah, he's got a distinctive birthmark. That's, we've all seen the same one. So, so there's no specific details? Well, you say that, but... Uh, I know you're a fan of liking it from scienti- scientists. Well, uh, during 1959, I believe, a report comes in from this chap, Von Stein, 
He's been told to do a uh, survey of the German colonies now in Africa. Oh, this is in 1913, actually. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and he starts doing reports of this thing. He hears about this creature called the, I'm going to butcher the name, Mokele Mbembe. Right. And, and that's the, the, that's, that's the dinosaur. Name that's the local dinosaur for the dinosaur. And uh, apparently it's in the jungle. And so he went and wrote these reports. Uh, and he was talking to he trusted native guides, um, native and other independent sources from different tribes in the area trying to find out about this creature and we have an exact quote the creature is said to be brownish grain color smooth skin approximately the size of an elephant but at least the size of a hippopotamus so it's got a bit of range to be honest that that's not as big as i thought actually no but saying that i recently saw a picture of the diplodocus from the natural history museum i remember it being bigger it was actually pretty smooth like the the height wise, is, yeah. is massive. It's massive. I'm gonna have to dispute that. It's massive. The neck is, but actually, like height, like from like your okay. from a from its feet to its back, not it's about the same size as an elephant. Neck is huge. Neck is surprisingly big, but yeah, it's that. But anyway, this creature had a long, flexible neck, and only one tooth. But some say a horn, like a rhino, maybe. And uh, basically, had a long, muscular tail, like that of an alligator. Okay, th this is getting very strange. It's like um, it does like something out of that film. What was it? The one with the rock. The one with the rampage. It sounds like something out of that. I mean, it's a sort of hybrid of this is the sequel to Rampage. Is the Macaulay and Bembe? That you're on something there. Maybe who knows? But hopefully. But yeah. Anyway, any canoes that came near it were said to be doomed, mm -hmm. as uh, it would just kill them. But it would attack the people on board. But it was a herbivore, apparently. Uh, only ate uh, essentially. Vegetables, and um, it preferred a plant, a kind of liana, with large white blossoms and a milky sap and apple-like fruits. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He had a very, he's very fussy. Is this very acquired taste. Yeah. So that was the thing, but that was a report from this guy, but apparently the reports were never published by the, I suppose, the, German, the Germans at the time. Because it, it does sound a bit mad. I, I wouldn't blame them. You, I think at any point in time, for... Publicly talking about these issues, you would be described as a bit, a bit mad. I'm currently on the radio discussing, Discu discussing it. And I mean, I'm on the other side of it, saying this is probably, probably wrong. Nonsensical. I mean, are there any other sources apart from Wikipedia? I mean, there are, but I'm not going to dive down deep into the. A lot of the it, yeah. Wikipedia sources are books from the time that were reporting on this creature. But in recent times, do you want to hear about the sort of modern stories behind this monster? There's still. Are there any more believable? Uh, I've seen some videos recently uh, describing of, of the allegedly sites of these creatures, and mm. they are, for lack of a better word, naff. <laughs> that, that's a good word. Yeah, that it's it's good. very you know your classic big first. It's a bit blurry, a bit shaky. Like, the person who hasn't can't hold the camera still for yes. love nor money. And what it essentially boils down to is a large splash coming out of a river in the in well, I presume the Congo. I, I presume the Congo. I mean, I didn't. You know, check. But if he says he's in the Congo filming this dance, I believe it. A large splash in the river. Uh, it was essentially, you know, when look at you know when you go to a hot tub, you see like the kind of bubbling water, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. just kind of froth. So it was that, and it what looked like a greyish kind of neck or tail just popping out the water. But it looked so tiny. Like if this thing was the creature, this is it's, big, it's a big lizard well, at best. A, a baby, perhaps. A possibly a Baba Mokele and Bembe. I, do you think that would be cute? No. No. It, judging by the sounds, the description we got from Von Stein. Not something you keep in No. I, like, Jurassic World had this, it wouldn't be their star attraction. No. No. It'd be the bad guy. Oh, it, it'd be the villain for Jurassic World 3, is what you're saying. It's Mokele and Bembe. Yeah. But, yeah, there's, there's, more, there's science to this day, allegedly this creature, and to this day, there's still people who go in search of it yeah, yeah. I, well because if you did find it my god well <laughs> you'd be you'd be rich wouldn't you you'd, you'd, no if you had a photo surely you could sell that to the papers you'd, 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 yeah you'd get, you'd get a bit of you get a bit of kickback from, from it's the, more, it's from more the, the personal satisfaction you'd be it. over the moon no, you, you might be dead you might see this creature and you like oh no it's after me it's, it's tipped the canoe over I'm gone I'm in the river and now been attacked by another dinosaur that I also, Wikipedia says is in the uh, Congo. Talking of things that may or not be real, 
we should bring to attention that we are missing a co-host. The, the third to our yeah to our to our, yeah our little co-host his name Jacob he's, is Jacob he's he's, he's not too well he's, well he's he's a wonderful man he's uh he's not he's not feeling too well today so he's a uh, he's elusive like the Macaulay and Bembe he might not be real he, he might have, be we, have we imagined this boy possibly since freshers it's just been a, a, a group delusion but yeah he certainly won't make it and yeah wish him well hope he gets better soon I do wish him well you're wishing well live on radio but um back to the matter of hand basically other dinosaurs little pterosaurs you know what a pterosaur is uh, not technically uh, a dinosaur uh, flying bird yeah, things yeah flying reptiles what they're not mistake. dinosaurs they're not dinosaurs everyone says they're dinosaurs they say flying dinosaurs they're wrong it's a flying reptile but there's also sightings of these things knocking about in the Congo allegedly like, yeah like, again I'm thinking just big birds <laughs> you mean, big I'm birds. thinking just big bats that's the translation big bats oh yeah Big bats. So they've got, the, they got the leathery wings. Yeah. There's a bird's kind of feathery. And you'd be like, oh, that's a bird. There's a big bat. You're like, oh, blind, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> Especially if it's got a little tail. But if yeah. It had a little tail, that changed everything, doesn't it? it? It does. It really does. It changes the perspective of the whole thing. And I've seen a video of, of, again of this. Again, no, well, it seen, could be the same video of this alleged creature. Okay. Um, and again, like the other previous video, mm. it could be the same shoddy cameraman. Uh, not HD. I'd, no. I'd barely call it standard D, to be honest, but sort of eighties t- type. Oh, it's very eighties in grading. In, in, it's grading, yeah. So it could be a bat he's filming, but he's saying it's this little di- this pterosaur, which he describes. I'm sure, which it is. is which the Wikipedia article describes as a Ramphorhynchus, which is essentially for those who don't know, which I presume you don't. Oh, pff, no, yeah. uh, it's about you can't see it, but I'm putting my hands out. It's about yay big, a foot. It's a foot. About a foot. It's, it's about a foot in about length. A foot long. Maybe. I, I've never actually... It's been a while since I've seen one in the museum. But it's that... About that long. Not a big creature. Mainly, mm. mainly insects and fish at the end of the day, I believe. And this thing is apparently swooping along the river eating insects, which sounds believable. Well, they, they do that. I believe this one's real more than the Macaulay and Bembe, mainly because it's, it's stinky. It could have survived. Maybe. Insects survive to this day, so maybe this little thing fed on them. But anyway, it's swooping along on the video and you can't really see anything any, I don't know why he filmed it to be honest maybe he no. was so shocked by what he saw he decided to film this thing but, what, what, when was this filmed again? oh god no, yeah, 2012 oh, okay so it was, I, I don't know that around. I'm guessing that. I imagine there's a guy in like, the 80s with and a... if he's got the money to go to the Congo I assume the Congo is pretty expensive to get to well, flights alone. Flights alone. Insurance. Insurance. To getting into the, the, f- the forest itself, which I believe is quite difficult. Yeah. It's still you relatively difficult. You need explore. a guide. You need to it's, yeah, you phone. need a guide. Yeah. He's, he's walking around for a guide. But yet you're telling me he can't walk out a decent camera to film his trip. It doesn't add up. No. Which is why I think it might be nonsense. It sounds, as much as it hurts me, because I wish there was a dinosaur still alive today, it might be nonsense. Hello, welcome back, uh, Max. Uh, after that song, is it been mulling over in your head the the possibility of dinosaurs in the Congo? Not not the show. The, not the, the show is is true. It's, it's it, we're, we're, we're live. We're doing it right now. The um the concept, it's one of the most surreal things that has ever come out of your mouth. And I've said some some surreal stuff. You've gone on about all sorts. Yeah, the Sasquatch is. For one, which I can't wait to talk to you about at some point. Yeah, maybe. I don't mean to build up to that one because that is yeah, that. There's a lot. I, there's a lot to unpack. That's, that's you've got passion. That's a clear hour conversation right there. Maybe more, but we've only got an hour, so we have to condense that one. We've got, we've got to spread it out. I think that one deserves a a, a, whole, a whole series for us to watch. <laughs> It'll be two episodes. It'll be a back to back, a special, <laughs> an Easter special. Oh, perhaps. potentially. I think we'll, we'll put that down in the diary. Um, yeah. So to conclude. You don't think it? You think it's nonsense? Nonsense. Not a chance. It's real. Um, I just feel sorry for these people who have said that they've seen it because they've probably just seen a big old hippo or something. A big hippo with a long neck and a horn. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at least they're leaving it be. They're, they're, they're leaving it, it be. They're leaving it be. Yeah. It, it allegedly kills elephants and hippos. What do you think? Of that? Yeah. Yeah. One more before we leave. Maybe one little bombshell that I want to drop on you before 
we move on to the next monster. Mm -hmm. I was watching a Discovery Channel documentary, mm -hmm. but in quotations, documentary, because they never proved anything. But um, they went to the Congo to in search of this creature. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I forgot to mention, apparently it's habitat, it lives in holes in the riverbank. Like, it goes <laughs> underground. <laughs> So it's it's like a like a like a mole, a, mo a reptilian aquatic mole. Yeah, it. The more I talk about, it, the more it sounds like nonsense, and so it just, is. That's just make me think about Jacob again. Because he burrows into holes like a mole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe, I mean. But anyway, <laughs> burrowing into holes aside, they went to the Congo and they went to the natives, mm. and they had a, a, a chart of. They went to several different indigenous tribes, and they had a chart of local fauna. And they were showing the meal. Okay. And a lot of them go, yeah, that's an elephant, that's a rhino. Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. they, they, were, they, were, they knew it, and then one of them showed a picture of a brontosaurus. And they were like, no, that's, that's the creature. That's, that's the one. We, we, we've got it. That's, that's it, mate. And they were like, oh, well, this is proof. See, that, that does initially make you think, whoa. Yeah. Uh, whoa. Because there's only been, in terms of like Western society, it's only been a few sort of books that have talked about this and mm -hmm. back in the day yeah. it was like the, the people in the colonies coming over and reporting back what the natives but I'm presuming the natives have been say, the people who lived in this area for thousands of years they well, must know about this yeah. creature they clearly know about it so maybe there might be something into it if like these guys generally think no oh, this is a creature this is dangerous we, it's elusive we don't see it that often but maybe maybe there's something behind that yeah, yeah. If, even if it's not a dinosaur it could be something like a big undiscovered rhino so if there is something, whatever it is, it's probably going to be something quite exciting. Yeah, so I, I hope one day we find out, the, get to the bottom of it. Um, probably won't be done in a lifetime. Well, maybe it will. Right, deforestation's going, we'll just cut down a tree. Oh, yeah. crap. Dinosaur. You know what? That's fair. That is fair. And now we'll quickly move on to our new monster, which I believe is one you've heard of. The Kraken. Are we going on to the Kraken? We're going on to the Kraken. Well, yeah. You've seen Pirates of Caribbean too. I've seen it. I've seen it, enjoyed it, loved it. Second best Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Third best Pirates of the Caribbean movie. What's the second for you? The third. The third? Oh. It goes one, three, two, four, five. <laughs> for me, it's more one, two, four, three, five, because I haven't seen five. And I don't believe you have either. I haven't seen it, but I've been told terrible, terrible things about it. It's all right. You say it's all right, do you, Jesse? It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. I remember st I'd never seen it, but I've seen enough of it on a plane from o watching other people's televisions. Ah, uh, right. It was alright for me. One, two, three, five, four. That's fair. One, two, three, five, four. Three I just goes on for too long. I can interchange two and three, but I just love. I I just love the third. It cannot be the, first one. the third. The third is for me. It goes on way too long. Like it's, there's nothing really happening for most of it until the end and the beginning. The middles. It's, it's still not out. quite as long as Das Boot, though, is it? It's not as long as Das Boot. Therefore, it's not a long film. No. If it's not as long, because Das Boot is what you measure a long film by. Exactly. Of Anything less than that hours? is just a... Yeah, I was going to say, just a long it, go, yeah, it goes on. Obscene. Obscene. But anyway, we're not doing a film review. We're no. doing a, a beast review. We're doing a beast review of The Kraken, which does show up in Pirates of Caribbean 2, and a brief bit in 3. It's dead. A kill off screen. Waste of, waste of time. Yeah, that, well, that was a sad moment. We won't go into that. that. But anyway, <laughs> what do you think about The Kraken? Just before we get into what it is, well, initial we, thoughts. We've talked about this before, and... You know, I, I I get that it could be a misinterpretation of the colossal squid, the giant squid, mm -hmm. colossal slash giant squid. Yeah, which let's not get into that. You know, they, they I think they they definitely do exist. Like, there's yeah. enough there's enough evidence they exist. And I think back in in the days of um, drunk, pi some, drunk pirates, 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 yeah, drunk pirates, that kind of thing. They, they were they were looking for something exciting, and if you see something. Un unheard of something so confusing like a colossal squid you're gonna you're gonna your instant reaction is to to go back home and you're gonna tell everyone well i just saw a I've kraken seen, I've, I've seen i've named it the kraken i've named it already the kraken because it's just a good name for a horrible horrible animal yeah um but the kraken has been around as a concept since the greeks i believe they had it in clash of the titans was it wrath of the titans one one of the Titans. One of the Titan movies. So, the, so they're, they're, the titles, they're talking about the Kraken. Yeah. Other the, people are talking about the Kraken. I think the Greek Kraken, though, it's not a giant squid. It's it's, a it's like a, to a tortoise. I thought it was a tortoise. Maybe a tortoise serpent. I, I think. I the, the image I've got is this giant 
half man, half octopus. Kind of. The bottom half is you, an octopus. You're going half man? Yeah, because remember it had arms and a face. The Kraken? The Kraken. Not, yeah. in, not in parts of the Caribbean. Oh, that's, that's why I based it The Greek my... one. Okay. Um, and that was the first thing. That was like, kind of the first mention of a Kraken, was that. Mm. And it, like, I don't know, killed gods. Or, I don't know, Class mythology. I don't agree mythology. I know someone who does, but... You so say you don't believe in mythology? No, I do. I, I don't believe in Greek mythology, but I know it exists. It's, okay. I can okay. pick up a book of Greek mythology, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the giant squid drags down boats and sails to the depths, Kraken. Right, so let's let's, let's play a song. Hello, music. This is um, oh, hang on. before we go. Jesse just brought Ooh, up a picture yeah. of the crack. So yeah, half a man, half octopus. Yeah. Let, I'll have a close look at that in a sec. All right, let's so. pack a song on, and we'll get back to you on the Kraken. Um, right, it's so a Kraken. You thought about the Greek? We've we've recently been informed by our producer sitting next to us, Jesse. That it was actually Norse mythology it appeared in first before going to the Greeks? Yes, well, that sort of tied into the Greeks with a movie. Yeah, so if you want to mm. talk about the Kraken for a bit, you can hop on. Just shuffle around. Get, get in this yeah, give us your insights, because, you know, we need it. Well, yeah. Being dragged in to talk absolute cobblers or something I know nothing about, nothing new. Well, that's um, what this show is. So according to an, in, an article I found on the internet, um, the Kraken is a creature out of Norse mythology, a sea monster that supposedly lived somewhere near Iceland and ate ships. It's only Greek because it was inexplicably included in the 1981 Ray Harryhausen stop-motion film Clash of the Titans in the form of a four-armed version of the creature from the Black Lagoon. So it was originally Vikings. Nice. I mean... It makes sense, because, I um, as I'm going to say here, the first kind of I- encounter with the squid version of the monster was from a Swedish naturalist, Carl von Linn. I hope I pronounced mm. that right. And basically he put that down in his uh, catalogue of natural creatures that he found called Systema Naturae. And that was from 1735, so it's kind of naive, it kind of makes sense. I, a bit I, I, I don't think... It being Viking makes it so much cooler. Yeah. I mean, the Vikings were pretty cool compared to the Greeks. The Greeks are cool. Oh, were they? Yeah. 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 No, they're Aristotle's. Yeah. 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 But, but Viking. Like togas. Viking. Yeah, they, they, got, they got up and did things. I mean, bad things, but they did them. Sort of massive naval explorers. Yeah. Isn't that... Didn't that some people think they got to, like, America first? Oh, there is There is thought that they got there first. Yeah, before the US Westerners got... Well, they are Western, but... Before the British and the Spanish got Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's get. So, so we're this, talking Viking Kraken. We're talking Viking Kraken. Viking. Well, we're talking Squid Kraken currently. Well, now we're talking Squid, Car- squid Kraken. Like, mm-hmm. so this guy Carl, he found he he catalogued it. Basically, he was getting it kind of from old Icelandic sagas and these reports of these creatures that were mm-hmm. coming in from sailors. It's I'm reading. There's a thing here about it. But basically, it's saying it was a huge monster in the sea. It is nature creatures swallow men and ships or even whales that were within its reach mm. which we'll get onto later if we're going to talk com- like, you know, comparisons between giant such colossal squid because mm-hmm. they, did, they did do that um, they did do that didn't they <laughs> they did do that so yeah it was just this creature with this huge jaw people used to say it was the size of, like they thought it was an island initially they get closer and then boom, boom. squid gets you you drag to the depths oh, what a way to go it'd be unpleasant it'd be unpleasant you'd be like whoa but also especially if it's like if it is Essentially, just a big giant squid, a big, big colossal squid, or maybe a, like a new species of that kind of lineage of cephalopod, like the big, no, the could giant kind. Because be. there's a lot, of, a lot of large, large animals that we just know probably exist or existed that, that we just don't. You will know, never see. Haven't saw, especially a, d- a deep sea creature where any kind of remains are unlikely to be found. Yeah, and even if we look at the colossal and giant squid today, we know they exist. We've got actual video footage of them, not this blurry stuff that you see from the, the dinosaurs in the Congo. Yeah. This it was actual HD footage from scientists. They found it. We, there's specimens in museums. There's actual creatures. And even they're extremely rare to find because how often they come to the surface because they're so deep down. So if that's the case, I do believe the Kraken as a mythical creature more likely than the Mokkeli and Bembe that we talked about previously. I'm with you there. Um, I have a question for you. Yes. Sure. Are you a fan of calamari? I'm a fan of the, I thought you would be. Yeah, the, the battered squid. Now, would you ever method. have, if it was sustainably 
farmed, of course. The, the sustainable farm. Kraken calamari. So it's sustainably sourced. I mean, it'd be the size of a plate. And that's just one ring. That's just one ring. One ring the size of a plate. I reckon it'd be bigger. If this thing's big enough to drag down, that's drag down a ship. Yeah, but you'd get one ring and just put all your chips in the middle. What? You would do that. Right, you've discovered something there. It'd be like a big bowl. Like when you get like the massive Yorkshire puddings and you put your roast dinner in them. Yeah. Massive squid ring, chips in the middle, blob of tartar sauce. Oh, I think that sounds fantastic. And it'd be actually. so much more sort of sustainable and economical. From one, from one cracker and you've got meals. Oh, it's not just... Calamar is no longer a starter. It is a main course. <sighs> I think you might... If you eat enough of anything, it's a main course. Yeah. If you, had if you eat enough bovril, it's technically a main course. It but it's not a good thing. It would probably kill you. It, it, it'd do something to you. Like, it's not good. I think that's something I'm going to have to Google. What, you what, how, how much bovril is too much bovril? You find, find out that for us. Find out. <laughs> We've derailed from Krakens. But uh, going back to your calamari suggestion, I, I'd eat it. I'd try it. I think I'd give Kraken a go. I'd try it, you know. I'd try Kraken calamari. It's just bad squid. I can't anymore. Vegetarian. You could go pescatarian. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just to try it, you know. Yeah, just you could break it this one time. Like for example, if we get if they did find the dinosaur in the Congo, and there were a ton of them, and it's sustainably farmed, would you? I eat know it? where this is going. Would you um, eat it? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't eat dinosaur nuggets. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I, I, I think they feel, feel something so wrong about it. Like we drove them to extinction. We didn't drive them to extinction. We might. Have I, I was I was getting crossed over with mammoths for a you, brief yeah. second you did because get... we were famously driving dinosaurs to extinction 60, 60 million years ago when there were we were um, proto rat no, stage I've, I've i take that back but i don't i wouldn't want us to help drive another an extinct animal to extinction yeah that would be bad that would be bad but what about the crack you're saying it's the same farm it's just well yeah yeah i'll go i'll go for some i've, I've had calamari before love it yeah okay so anyway back to the kraken so I feel like I'm just trying to make myself believe in the Kraken just because I love food, and that sounds like something yeah. right on my street. It's yes, yeah, so basically, these Norwegian sailors they came back after returning from Greenland, according to Wikipedia, um, of this old unknown author of this old Norwegian natural history text. Mm. Um, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that because I'm not going to get it wrong. It might be offensive. Yeah. So definitely. around. 1250, this book was written, mm-hmm. describing in detail the physical characteristics, the feeding behaviour of the Kraken. So, this guy, he's, he's got a lot of notes on it. It's not like some guy's going, yeah, I just I said a dinosaur in the Congo. It's like, oh. I've got, it's like, there is, there is a fish that is still unmentioned, which is scarcely advisable to speak about because of its size. Uh, most people, it'd be incredible to most people. There are only few that can speak upon it because they never, no, most people have never seen it, let alone survived it. So basically, a lot of fishermen saw this, and then after they were seeking to see, they found this creature, and it translates to the Kraken. I'm not going to try and pronounce its original name. Mm-hmm. And basically, he can't, it speaks of like the length of L's. He can't say how big it is because it's just so big, according to this. I conclusively speak about it in length of L's because of the times he has shown before men it's been more like land than fish. So he's saying it's more of like an island than it was well, a big fish. And that, again, fits with other... Other reports. Other reports, so yeah, he's, he's getting there. Where are you up to your, your Bovril analysis, Jesse? All right, just sort of breaking in with completely pointless news on the oh, Bovril front. Here we go. So to get a 50%, 50% chance of death from salt ingestion via Bovril, you'd have to eat over two kilos of Bovril. How much is in a regular tub? How much, the one you've got down there. The regular tub I have with me here in the studio is 250 grams. So 250 grams, so... What? I have 10 of those. 10 of those would kill you. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ten, 10 jars of this and you're dead. Well, you've, you've got, got 50 percent chance, chance of dying. And so if you push it to 11, more likely. Yeah, 20. every every time you so, so exceed a jar. What's the lethal dose? What? Well, the, the, the 50, LD50. The, the LD50, 50 percent chance of dying, 250 grams of salt, which works out to be okay. uh, roughly 2,000 grams of this. You need to look after yourself, mate. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, we're back. Uh, during that song, I was doing a bit more cracking related research. And I've, on, on, on Wikipedia. Research being a very loose term. <laughs> I'm looking at the Wikipedia page. Um, apparently, in 1781, Swedish author Jacob Wallenberg described the Kraken in his book, My Son on the Galley. My, uh, my, my Son on the Galley. Okay. Uh, so that's nautical. Anyway, um, he said the Kraken, also referred to as the crabfish, 
I don't know why he doesn't go on to any it's longer to say why it's called the crabfish, but it's, there's it's the no, crabfish. nothing crab-like about it. Unless we're going from like, the, the Norse mythology, where it's kind of that picture looked kind of crabby, but not if we're going by a true word. But um, anyway, he's, he's, he makes the bold claim that it's not that big. Well, he's exactly the words are, it's not that huge. He's seen bigger. He's, he's seen bigger. He says it's no longer than our Orland. I think that's how it's pronounced. Orland. And basically, I less than 16 kilometres. So for him, anything less than 16 kilometres isn't very big. Yeah. For an animal. For an animal, he... For a big animal, he, he wants something, you know, the size of the UK, perhaps. Maybe his depth perception's off. Like, <laughs> Maybe, Did he mean 16 metres? No, it's, it says kilometres. You're looking at the page. No, you have not. 16 kilometres. I think someone's I edited think... that Wikipedia page and is having you on, Dan. He might be, like, we could be talking... This is your slow descent to madness when you start <laughs> believing these things. Well, a uh, uh, Pinch of salt. I'm taking everything with a pinch of salt about the Kraken. <laughs> Especially from this Jacob Wallenberg character. Oh, he sounds all kinds of wrong. I mean, I don't want to slander the dead. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> no. the long dead. I don't. I don't Jacob trust Wallenberg, him, but anyway. All right, but he's not. He's not our only uh, only source, is he? He's... Well, this is. He's, he's, he seems he's got a good look at it. He's saying it's constantly surrounded by innumerable small fishes, which serves his food, and they feed him in return for his meal. I, I don't. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know what he means by that. I said, if I remember correctly. So he's. This is, he's writing this later on in like, oh, that time I saw the crack and I've kind of forgot. I'm a bit hazy on it. I kind of forgot. Yeah, I didn't tell anyone at the time, but huge monster. Like, yeah, just sort of. Oh, I remember that monster I saw. Yeah, was, oh, you know, was it about sorry, sixteen kilometres long or something? Not that, not that long. Not, not, that, not that. No, not because it wasn't. It was famously small. Yeah, it was famous. He stays by the sea floor, mm. and these fish sit, feed him constantly. And it, for his meal, he, he said it lasts long, longer than three months. And then after, then he only he eats it, and then three months later he digests it, and then it excrements nurture the, f- the following fish Blimey. so that's where the fish get the food that's what they say about the kraken and they eat, they eat his poo nice bit of symbiosis there. yeah lovely bit of symbiosis with the kraken that's what you think maybe, maybe it's a bit real <laughs> well it does make you think doesn't it it does make you think but anyway yeah it was just saying like it just comes up eats people they, th- they thought it was a floating island they come for it oh no it's his nostrils <laughs> <laughs> then he eats them and that moment it's too late it is You're it's too late so let's let's uh, have a quick look at what it's like compared to an actual squid do you know much about the giant squid, Max? Um, I know the giant squid is is a real Creature. cephalopod. It is a real and cephalopod. And it is the most intelligent invertebrate, I want to say. It's got a brain. Maybe. Incredible eyes. It's got huge eyes. It's got, well, I think possibly the biggest eyes of an invertebrate, because they are huge. Basketball size. Yeah, basketball size. Yeah. They're pretty, 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 pretty good amount of... Um, Pretty good eyes. Well, because they've got li- they live at the in the abyss at the bottom of the ocean, which is yeah. fancy dark. So that takes in as much all the, like the they limited need. light there is. And they feed on whales. So I mean, a whale's big. Surely you wouldn't need eyesight at all. You could just sort of just fill your whale. That's what the tentacles are for. They're not really weapons. And they've got like serrated suckers, I believe. They got like okay. kind of each sucker has like little tiny like, multiple little teeth on it, which they latch on. So which when you can mm. s- when sometimes we find sperm whales on, dead on the surface, they've yeah. got these huge claw marks on them. Which is where giant or colossal squid have attacked them, or or possibly a kraken. Mm. Well, I reckon the kraken would eat a hole. <laughs> it's a little snack, isn't it? It's a little snack to the kraken. He's <laughs> sixteen kilometers long, which isn't that big. No, yeah, Jason uh, Easy, easy, easy. He can eat that pretty. He can eat well. Yeah. But yeah, that's the creature. So possible theory here, Max. I've seen this floating about on the internet. Hit me with it. I'll hit you with it. The kraken, mm-hmm. undiscovered species of giant squid, even bigger. It's huge. Okay. They feed on whales, and from what I can gather, when they attack, they go from below. So you can't you can't really see this, listeners, but uh, my hand is a ship. It's kind of hand, hand is a ship, and but no, my other hand is the kraken. It's below it, and they basically come up and attack from the below and pull it under. From below, he looks up. He thinks it's a whale. It's a big ship. It's <laughs> it's 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 the black pearl. Jack Sparrow's on it. Ah, oh, I'll get you, David Jones. Uh, I've got your heart. That's, that's what he says, isn't it? This is that quote is I've got I'll get you David Jones. Alright, so, so the crack comes up and Crack comes up, grabs it, thinking it's a but thinking it's a uh, 